Hello, in this lecture we'll be taking a look at adjusting journal entries. So we are now on the adjusting process. In the prior lecture we took a look at the journal entries for the period. So that is over here and we end up with this trial balance as of the end of the transactions for the month of May in this case. Now we're going to go to this tab. It's the adjusting tab is where we are at at this time. And we're going to start with the ending trial balance that we ended with in the journal entries tab. So these are the same numbers in the unadjusted trial balance that we have from the prior work. And you can see from the formula that we're just basically pulling these numbers into this tab from the prior tab. We're going to take those numbers and we're going to adjust them in the adjusting column and come up to an adjusted trial balance. So instead of us posting these transactions to the um, general ledger in this piece, we're just going to post them to this adjusting worksheet so we can have a very quick glimpse as to where we start, what the adjustment is, and where we end up as we go. So first I want to talk about the general rules for the adjusting process. They're going to be a bit different than the format of questions that I would go through when we are talking about the general journal entries because the adjusting process will be a bit different. We're going to do it as of the end of the time period. Therefore, in this case, it's the end of the month. Our goal is to make the adjusted trial balance so that it is correct on an accrual basis so that we can use it to make the financial statements as of that point in time, the end of the month, the cutoff period in this time frame. In that, in so doing, what we're going to do is take a look at which accounts need to be adjusted to be more on an accrual basis. And the link, the questions I would go through to do that would be and will be that we're going to have one balance sheet account above the blue line because the blue line is the separating line between the balance sheet accounts and the income statement accounts. And we're going to have one income statement account down here below the blue line because these are the income statement accounts, income and uh, expenses and income statement accounts only go up. If we go by those rules, we can find out which way the accounts are going to be going without even really knowing what is going on, why we're doing it. Then we'll, of course, talk more about why we're doing it. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger here so we can see a bit more of it. Note that we have uh, something that is in balance at the beginning. This is the unadjusted trial balance, assets minus liabilities, um, equals owner's equity and also the debits minus the credits will equal zero indicated by the green zero and the bottom here. Uh, we're going to post the transactions into here to come up to our adjusted trial balance. We can see the accounting equation here as well, adding up assets, liabilities, and those will be uh, equal to liabilities plus the owner's equity in this section as well. All right, so let's start off with A and once again, it's going to be as of 531. So I'm going to put 531 for all of these because all of these entries will be as of the end of the month. Insurance expired during May. So if we think about that, then there's going to be one account above the blue line related to insurance. And we go through here and say, hmm, what is related to insurance up here? How about prepaid insurance? So I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to uh, make that green just to indicate that that's going to be one that we will be looking at. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller here. And then if we go down below the blue line, there's going to be something related to insurance. And of course, that's going to be insurance expense in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and make that green. And we know that there's account below the blue line is an expense account. Like all these expense accounts, they generally only go up. They all have debit balances. And how are we going to make it go up? We're going to do the same thing to it, which in this case will be another debit. So I'm just going to copy this and say copy that. I'm going to put it in cell C5, right click and paste it 123. That's going to be our debit. I'm not going to put the amount in there yet, but I'm going to think about what the credit account would be. Um, and that, of course, is going to be the other account that we looked at. And so the credit, if we're going to debit the insurance expense and put that on top, then we must be crediting prepaid insurance. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it down here in the second half of our journal entry right click paste it one two three in cell uh, c6 and you could type it in there i think it's a little bit faster to do this copying and pasting and that we know that we're going to basically debit insurance expense and credit prepaid insurance again without even knowing what we're doing and why we're doing it uh, so now let's talk about what we're doing and why we're doing it so what is prepaid insurance how did it get there prepaid insurance is what we're going to tell our accounting department basically is every time you write a check for insurance just credit cash and then instead of debiting insurance expense, we want the accounting department to debit prepaid insurance. Why? Because by definition, prepaid insurance is something that you pay before you use it. 
oftentimes for more than a month in advance. So we might pay for a whole year's policy before we, we use the policy. Under the matching principle, we need to expense it as we use it. It is not practical for the accounting department necessarily to be on a perfect accrual basis because they would have to make an adjustment maybe even hourly <laughs> as the policy is being used. So in this case, we're going to make it correct as of the cutoff date, as of the end of the month. That's going to be part of the adjusting process, which we are doing now. So we have now um, gotten the information from the account department. We've uh, instructed them to put all insurance payments into prepaid insurance. Then we're going to determine how much has expired. So uh, in order to do that, we're going to look at the policy and see how much time has expired. Uh, we won't go into that calculation here, but just note that there could be two ways that we give the answer. We could say, this is what prepaid insurance should be as of the end of the time period. Or we could say this is how much of the prepaid insurance has been used. In this case, the terminology says insurance expired. So that means that we're talking about how much has been used. So that means we can just say that the 300 should be the expense. So I'm going to debit the 300 and I'm going to credit 300 for the same amount. Uh, if, on the other hand, we had said that prepaid insurance as of the end of the period should be uh, so and so, then in 1200s, we would have to take this account and see what we would need to do to it to bring it to the amount that was given. So just be uh, careful when you look at the prepaid insurance, they could ask you in either of those ways. So if we post this, then let's see what happens. I'll post the prepaid insurance. We're going to go down here to cell I-22. We're in I-22. I'm going to select equals and point to the 300. That's going to bring the account from zero up by 300 to 300. And it puts us out of balance, brings net income down. We increase the expense. We're going to go over here to I-9. Same thing, equals, but now we're going to point to prepaid insurance. This is a debit, that's a credit. It's going to bring the prepaid insurance down to, in this case, 1200 So we brought the insurance down by the amount that we consumed in this time period being the month in this case. All right, so I'm going to ungreen these and take a look at the second transactions, go through the same set of questions and same process. So B, it's also going to be on 531. So if you want to put B in here, that would be okay too, but uh, just recognize that they're all going to be as of 531 because this is the, uh, the adjusting process. Supplies on hand on May 31st are 750. All right, so first we're just going to go through our questions. What's going to be the account above the blue line related to supplies? Not a trick question. Supplies possibly could be the one. So I'm going to say, okay, let's make that green. We're going to deal with that account. Note that having the trial balance in front of you is handy. I would have a trial balance in front of you at all times. And then even if it's not the related trial balance to the problem can still be useful. Then there's going to be account below the blue line on the income statement related to supplies. Hmm, how about supplies expense? Those look like the two accounts that will be affected. And then if we look down here, these are expense accounts. They all have debit balances represented by the fact that they do not have brackets. They only go up. Therefore, we're going to make this expense account go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put that in cell C8. Right click, paste it, one, two, three, like so. And then again, I'm not going to put the amount yet. I'm going to think about next what the other account will be, which of course will be supplies. If we debit the expense, we're going to credit the supplies. We're going to represent that by putting the credit on the bottom. So I'm going to copy this, I'm going to put it on the bottom in C9. C9 is right there. Right click and paste it, uh, one, two, three. And then we have to think about the amount. So once again, we can kind of think about, we can see what we're going to do, which accounts are affected, which way it's going to go just by thinking through that series of questions for the adjusting process. Now let's think about why we're doing this and what the amount should be. And if we think about hmm, supplies, how did it get there? Well, when again, when we talk about the accounting department over here in the adjusting process, we tell the accounting department, if in my case, if we're a CPA firm, every time we buy paper in this case, we want the accounting department to record it not to supplies expense, but they're going to credit cash or accounts payable and debit supplies the asset. Why? Because if supplies is significant, we should be expensing it as we use it. So we're going to set the system up for them to just post it into supplies the asset. We then on the adjusting process once a month will fix it by counting the supplies. And this will be similar to inventory at a later time. 
seeing how much we have then used, and then writing down the supplies to how much has been used. So in this case, we see that on hand, there are supplies of 8850, and we counted it to be 750, minus 750. So that means that we have used 8100. 8, so that means that we need to reduce this amount by 8,100. That's going to be the amount of the transaction in order to get the result to be 750. So let's see if that's the case. If it doesn't happen, if this number doesn't turn out to be 750 after we're done, we made a mistake. So we're going to go here. I'm going to put that same formula in here. So I'm going to put equals and do that same calculation we did in the calculator of 8850 minus 750. Enter. That's the 8-1, it's gonna be the same debit and credit. So I'm gonna just put negative 8-1 for the credit. Gonna hit enter, that'll put the brackets around it. Then we can go ahead and post this out. So I'm gonna go scroll down here. We are now in cell I-20. We can say equals, and then go point to that 8,100. That's gonna bring the balance up from zero to 8,100. Puts us out of balance, brings net income down by the amount of the supplies that we have used. We're going to go over here to the supplies uh, asset in I7 equals and then scroll down and point to that 8100 and enter. That's a debit. This is a credit. Brings it down to 750, which is what we wanted it to be. Now, supplies is going to be an introduction to inventory. We're going to do inventory in a similar type of fashion in, in that we'll count the inventory and, and see how much we have used over a certain time period. Also, of course, many companies may just expense supplies if they are in material. So uh, putting it on as an asset and then expensing it will take more time. If supplies is uh, not material and uh, it's a smaller, a small company or something, it may very well be that supplies are just being expensed as they are purchased. But it is a good practice of the accrual method to go through this practice. It's also a good practice in order to be an intro to inventory, which we'll talk about at a later time. All right, so I'm going to unhighlight these so we can go down to the next item and do the same series of questions. And 531, we're going to go down to C at this time. Depreciation of office equipment. All right, so there's going to be an account above the blue line related to depreciation. And hmm, oh, here's one that has depreciation in it, accumulated depreciation, long word. But we're just going to say, okay, I bet that one's going to be one that should be affected here. Then there's going to be an account below the blue line on the income statement related to depreciation. How about depreciation expense? So again, just kind of by the wording, we can say those two are affected. We know that these are expenses. We can see that they all have debit balances. Expenses only go up. Therefore, we're going to make depreciation expense go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put my cursor in C11, right click, paste it, one, two, three. Again, I'm not going to put the amount in there yet. What we want to do is just see what the other account, what's going to be the credit account. It's going to go on the bottom. And that, of course, will be accumulated depreciation. So if we debit the expense, we're going to have to credit the uh, other account. I'm going to copy this and paste it underneath. Paste it one, two, three. So we can see which accounts will be affected, which way they will be going without really knowing what depreciation is at all. If we go through that series of, pre of questions, now let's talk about what depreciation is and what is depreciation here? Accumulated depreciation up on the balance sheet is in the asset section. You'll notice it's green, but it's got like a negative or it's got a credit balance in it. So what happens with depreciation is that we are buying equipment. Equipment being something that would be large, say like a forklift or something like that. Uh, when we buy the forklift, then we, we don't just expense it as we purchase it because the forklift will affect the future uh, we'll be using it throughout the future. So for example, if we bought this forklift for 14,000 and we expensed it, then that would make net income look very low in the year of purchase because it would be a large expense. And in the following year, the net income might be a lot higher by the fact that we're using the same forklift, but we purchased it last year. So theoretically that doesn't make a lot of sense because the forklift is being used in both years. So we want to be able to match net income from year to year. We don't want the forklift being purchased in one year to make one year look really bad and the next year really good, even though the forklift is being used in the both years. It makes more sense for us to match the forklift usage or the cost allocated to that usage in the year in which it is being used. 
So that's going to be the idea of depreciation. So we're going to uh, talk about the methods to calculate that depreciation at a later time, but the most obvious method will be a straight line method, uh, which means we'll take that cost, we'll divide it by the useful life of the forklift, and then we will expense it over that useful life. Uh, but we won't go into that calculation in any more detail than that <laughs> at this point. They're going to have to give us the number at this point. So we have the 330. That is what uh, the depreciation expense is determined to be. So then you would think, well, why don't we decrease the value of the forklift with a credit by uh, 330? And the reason we don't do that, notice that we did do that in supplies. We said, hey, supplies went down. We'll just write down supplies from this to that. Why don't we write down the forklift from this to whatever it is after the decline in value? And the reason is because we want to tell our reader two things. We want to tell our reader, hey, we bought the forklift for this amount. We, you know, at the end of the year, there's still one forklift. It's not like supplies. It's not like I counted supplies and there's less than one forklift. But we do know that it went down in value and we need to represent that. So we want to tell you uh, by making this new account, that this is the estimate of the value that we're assuming it went down by. So this is just an estimate. We're telling our reader, hey, it's just an estimate that it went down by. We still have one forklift. That's what it cost. We're assuming it went by down by this month. That's why this is going to be a contra asset. We're going to call this a contra account, a contra asset, meaning that all assets have debit balances. This asset has a credit balance. It's contra to the norm.